hi guys welcome to the last day of oxano <sighs> i i don't know what to say i'm very i'm very emotional i'm very happy that we've made it this far it's been a whole journey hey there have been the good days you know the days where i'm like oh let's have oxano there are the days where i'm like lord this is my last strength if you don't help me i don't know how we're going to do Oksano today. But God has been faithful. He has really helped me. He has helped so many of you here stay consistent. I have read some stories from you guys and it's just humbling to see what God can do with your yes. So congratulations if you've been following so far. Even if you joined midway, if you joined at the beginning, if you were here from the first cohort, I am so proud of you for choosing to grow, okay? If you've missed anything on Oxano, please go back. I'm not going to take the videos down. So there's an entire playlist on YouTube and on podcasts. So on YouTube, it's saved in one playlist folder. So on my channel, the Lightroom, you can just look for playlists and click Oxano and all the episodes will be there for you. So let's get into today's devotional. When I started the first cohorts of Oxano, I sent out a form and I asked people to tell me their biggest concerns. It was actually a letter, a newsletter. I asked them to tell me my, their biggest concerns joining Oxano. And it was very, very daunting to see some people's concerns because they were real and they were genuine. There was one I particularly remember and she said that she is excited or she was excited joining Oxano and she was happy about it but her fear was that this would be one more um one more attempt for her to grow that would fail and even if she grows in this period the period of 28 days where we had the first cohort she's afraid that after Oxano she would no longer be consistent and this is someone that I am seeing show up more and more, you know. But one thing I have learned personally in my life, and I would always tell anybody that I find struggling with one fear or the other is, God does not train his children with fear. God doesn't instruct us by teaching us to be afraid of anything. Okay, so anytime I, I find something I'm afraid of in my life, I remember that God doesn't lead me in fear. So it's easy for me to spot that the devil is trying to take advantage of that situation. Okay. So when it comes to your growth, you may have been very consistent on Oxano so far. You may have had bad days, days where you missed, days where you were not as consistent. But the point is you kept showing up. The point is that you are here right now watching this video and it's, it's a push in the right direction to grow. So anytime the devil tries to pop up and tell you, oh, you're doing one video today, you may fall again tomorrow. I want you to take up the shield of faith and the sword of truth, which is the word of God. I taught you about this, this yesterday. So I want you to affirm what God is doing in you, what God has done in you through Oksanu and even through his spirits generally. Okay. So what I'm going to do for you in this um, devotional the last day of Oxano I'm going to do for you is to give you an avenue or to strengthen your heart to stay consistent post Oxano so when I'm not here with you every day sending you videos sending you podcast episodes and tasks when I'm not here with you every day how can you stay consistent on your own I want you to read with me Ephesians 5 verse 18 I know that we've read Ephesians 5 before, and I purposely left this part for the end of Oxano because it's very important. So Ephesians 5 verse 18 says, don't be drunk with wine because that would ruin your life. I love how NLT puts this portion. It says, instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, let's pause. You may want to ask, what's the difference between being filled with the Holy Spirit and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit? Because in Ephesians 1, 
Paul writes to the church and tells them that they have received the Holy Ghost. Ephesians 1 verse 13 to 14, it says, When you believed in Christ, he identified you as his own by giving you the Holy Spirit, whom he promised long ago. So you may want to ask, uh, you, you've already told us in chapter 1 that we have the Holy Ghost. So what do you mean by being filled with the Holy Ghost? Did he go on vacation in between chapter 1 and chapter 5? No. Let me explain it as simply as I can. When you receive Jesus, when you believe the gospel, you are sealed with the Holy Ghost of promise. It's a promise from God and he fulfills it. It's his part and his responsibility to fill you with the Holy Ghost, to give you the Holy Ghost. So when you receive Jesus, Christ dwells in you by faith. Christ dwells in you by the Holy Ghost. Now, it may not be dramatic. Your clothes did not change on the day you received Jesus or you decided to believe the gospel for what it really was. Nothing spectacular may have changed about you. You may have sp spoken in tongues on that very day or you may have just experienced a form of peace, something very different. But it could also have been an ordinary day for you, okay? But one thing that doesn't change is that you receive the Spirit when you believe in the Lord Jesus. We see Ephesians 1 verse 13 to 14 tell us that. So what does Paul mean by being filled? I want you to look at how he starts this chapter, I'll be this um, passage. He says, don't be drunk with wine because that will ruin your life. I want you to think about what it takes to be drunk with wine. Don't isolate that part before you get to be the filled with the Holy Spirit part. How do you get drunk with wine? It's not by looking at the bottle or having the bottle in your house. It's by drinking consistently. The first sip doesn't get you drunk. And the second sip usually doesn't get you drunk. But as you keep drinking, you get drunk. Now, this is not an ad to get drunk. I've done a whole video on alcohol and all of that. So, um, trust me, I'm not advocating for drunkenness or anything. I'm explaining what Paul is trying to convey here with his words. So, in the same vein, you are filled with the Holy Spirit when you give yourself constantly to the influence of the Holy Spirit. You got drunk or people get drunk when they give themselves constantly to the influence of that bottle of wine or toxic um, or intoxicating drink rather in the same vein you are filled constantly with the holy spirit when you give yourself to the the influences of the spirits and i'll explain how to do this he he, he lists the way to do this he says singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs amongst yourself these are things that are influences of the spirits when you are singing of what god has done you are singing of his praise you are singing of his beauty you are doing this within the gathering of saints within body of christ and he says making music to the lord in your hearts and giving thanks for every everything to god the father in the name of our lord jesus so how do you stay filled with the holy spirit from this portion of scripture sing like it's, it's such an underrated thing i really started to find it easier to stay longer in prayer when i became more conscious about worshiping because at some point in my christian journey i was made to believe that if i i worship when i'm supposed to be praying i'm not being a serious christian or i'm being distracted now i slightly understand what some preachers mean when they say worship time and prayer time is not worship time because um some people don't want to pray so they spend the whole time singing right and they're not being conscious about it i get that but here we see paul admonishing people to sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs and make music in their hearts to the lord so it's an important part of prayer. Worship is not just about the songs. Worship is first and foremost a disposition of your life. Worship is offering yourself as a living sacrifice to the Lord. So day in, day out, whether you're singing or you're praying, your heart is poured out as a sacrifice to the Lord. That's really worship, okay? It's not just about the song or the atmosphere, okay? 
So when you, you sing songs of worship, you are being filled with the Spirit. And when I said to do this more consciously in my devotion time, I just found it easier to enjoy prayer, easier to enjoy my time with the Lord. Like, I'll give you an example. A couple of weeks ago, I went on a date with my husband. And I just stood up at some point. I mean, it was a long-ish date. So it was all dates that you go out. I don't know if people do it. But sometimes we go out to maybe eat, right? And let's say we stepped out by 2 p.m. And we want to be out for the most of the day. Maybe go home later in the evening. So after we just, 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 we can just pick our laptops and continue working. And if you remember something, we'll just... So at this point, he was on a work call. So I stood up and wanted to take a walk. Like, in my head, I just wanted to take a walk to the bathroom or to just get some fresh air and come back. And as I was walking out, I just felt an urge to sing. And I started singing. And from singing, I started to pray in tongues. And from praying in tongues, I started to just talk to the Lord about something that I had been talking to him for a long time. And I was hearing clearer some things he wanted me to do. So now imagine if I did not want to um, yield to that nudge from the Spirit. Imagine if I was waiting for a quiet time to get home and everything is in order and I'm with my journal and I, I can pray loudly. Imagine I was waiting for a perfect time. I have found that I'm able to stay filled within a random course of my day when I allow myself bust out in songs. When I allow myself just bust out praying like for no reason i did it again today we went out today and i just stood up randomly and i stepped outside and a song came to my heart and i just started singing the song and i didn't check the time but i was outside for quite a while i realized i was outside for quite a while because i remember the last text i sent before going out and when i went back in there was quite some time that had passed and that started with me just singing so you can stay filled with the Holy Ghost by just singing. Surround yourself with influences. Sometimes the reason why you are struggling so much to pray is that you are not surrounding yourself with, with ginger to pray. Your playlist. Mm -hmm. uh, there was one song that came to my mind. I wanted to ask you if it was on your playlist, but I will not mention that song. It's just trending on IG. It's annoying. It does, the song does not have up. It does not have down. Someone will just come and release a whole album. But anyway, I digress. That's not what I'm talking about today. But let your playlist encourage you to spend time with the Lord. You can do this by just calling a friend and two of you are singing together. I, I love doing this with my husband a lot. He's an amazing songwriter. It's just a gift that the Lord has given to him. And I love singing songs that I have seen him write. Okay. So sometimes he may just be singing and playing on his guitar and then I join him and then we sing together and it ends up being such a beautiful time of worship. So I want you to practice that today. Just pick a song and let your heart dwell on it. Okay. So I'll give you some final tasks for our time in Oksanu today. Some very final tasks. Number one, watch this video that I'm going to link at the end of this episode on hacking devotional consistency so if you're listening on podcast i'll link it as well in the description box it's on hacking devotional consistency it's just to help you stay afloat even after oxano ends okay the second thing is i want you to pray with someone today we saw that a way to stay filled in the holy ghost is by singing psalms with one another so i want you to pick someone maybe on the accountability group the oxano accountability group or a friend of yours and pray with that person today okay let me know when you've done it the third thing i want you to do is to please share your oxano story with me so you can share it on the accountability group in my dms via mail wherever just share it with me i would love to hear from you last thing i want you to do my very final task for you on oxano is even though we will not be meeting tomorrow for a new devotional i will be here with you every single week to help you grow in the lord so subscribe to this channel so like this um podcast keep it on your favorites okay on podcast so that every time i release a new episode you'll be the first to know if you're on youtube please click the notification bell you'll be the first to know when i premiere a video a short a post whatever it is you can stay growing with me it doesn't have to be 
um, just for Oksana. Okay? Thank you so much for being on this journey with me so far. Thank you for being a part of Oksano. I will see you for a future cohort. If there is, <laughs> I'll let you know. I'll definitely let you know. I'll keep you updated on whatever events um, related to Oksano I would bring up along the line. But I pray for you in the name of Jesus that the growth you've seen will not diminish, that you would only grow deeper and deeper in love with the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. I love you. Have an amazing, amazing day.